G'day. Welcome to this time together, this time of worship, of looking for God and looking for hope. As we come together, hear the words of the psalmist from Psalm 29, where the psalmist calls us to worship the Lord in holy splendor, to come before our God, recognizing God's holiness, God's otherness, and marveling that this God calls us his children. Let's pray. Loving Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to gather wherever and whenever we are. As we approach you, we recognize that we are in your presence by your grace. That we are called your children through your love. And so we honor and praise you, thanking you for the generous gifts that you give to us. Life, opportunities and love. We thank you, Father God for bringing us into union with each other, for bringing us together. We pray that as we worship together, we might know your presence powerfully in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's sing our praises to God. story of fear and finding peace. Bob the Bird One day, 
Bob the bird went to visit his friends. First he flew to the farm to see Kevin the quail. Come and see the farmer, said Kevin. You won't believe it. He has sown his crop, but every day he worries. What if it doesn't rain? What if the plants don't grow? What if I don't grow enough to feed my family? Oh, poor fella. Doesn't he have a father in heaven, like the one who cares for the birds? Bob said goodbye to Kevin and flew to town to see Penelope the pigeon. Come, see the butcher, said Penelope. You won't believe it. He says his sausages are all beef, but I've seen him. They're half sawdust. Every day he worries. If I don't cut corners, I'll go broke. If I go broke, I'll lose me shop. If I lose me shop, I'll lose me reputation as a respectable businessman. Poor fella. Doesn't he have a father in heaven like the one who cares for the birds? By now it was getting late. So Bob said his goodbyes and flew off to visit his old friend, Ozzy, the owl. Come and look at this, said Ozzy. You won't believe it. She does an honest day's work, then stays up every night worrying. What if the prices go down? What if my wages go down? What if I fall asleep and someone steals all my money? Doesn't she have a father in heaven, like the one who cares for the birds? The next day, Bob saw a crowd of worried people. He felt sad because they didn't seem to have a father in heaven who cared for them. But in the middle of the crowd was a man with a happy smile. Don't worry about your life, he said. Don't worry about having some to eat or to wear. Life is more than food and clothes. Look at the birds of the sky. They don't plant or harvest. They don't even store grain in barns. Yet your Father in heaven feeds them. Hooray! The people do have a Father in heaven who cares for them. If only they'd believe it. Our world in need needs the peace of God. Our lives need that peace as well. Let's pray. Loving Father God, we recognise all of the situations and places where the choice of violence, the choice of setting ourselves up against others brings a total lack of peace. We recognise the peace that does not exist within our hearts. The peace that could exist between communities that is fractured by fears and hatreds, by desires and greeds, by self-interest and a lack of compassion. Lord, forgive us for what we have contributed to this situation. Renew our hearts. Renew our minds. Place a right spirit within us. That we might be agents of your mercy and your justice, your hope and your love, your peace for all peoples. Lord, we pray for healing in our world. Healing of bodies, healing of minds, healing of souls, and relationships that we might all be better versions of ourselves and thus more reflective of who you our creator are lord we pray for all those who struggle to find hope this day all those who struggle with grief all those whose anxieties and fears hold them back from the future that you have for them. 
We pray for freedom from burdens, for an ability in your power to make the most of the opportunities that exist to discover life and life to the full. And Lord, we pray for our leaders, all leaders, that they might first humble themselves before you, that they might listen not to popularism, not to personal agendas, but to your still small voice. that all leaders might be willing to walk the humble way of Jesus, risking life and limb to call us to repentance, to generosity, to grace, and to love. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's continue in song. Isaiah chapter 43 But now, this is what the Lord says, He who created you, Jacob, He who formed you, Israel, Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your stead. Since you are precious and honored in my sight, and because I love you, 
I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth, everyone who is called by my name, who I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And with many other words, John exhorted the people and proclaimed the good news to them. But when John rebuked Herod the Tetrarch because of his marriage to Herodias, his brother's wife, and all the other evil things he had done, Herod added this to them all. He locked John up in prison. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form, like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. But now... This is what the Lord says. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. Fear not. A logical man would say that there is much to fear. Much to be concerned about. Much to look at in our world and go, oh, not sure. And maybe there is. And maybe at this moment, our use of the word fear trips us up. That we use the word so easily. Perhaps even lazily. For there is a great difference between the fear that causes us to be cautious, to look at our surrounds, to analyze a situation and make good decisions. There's a great difference between that fear and the kind of fear that paralyzes us or causes us to strike out with with out thinking and, and with anger and frustrations and there's a big difference. See, it seems to me that the psalmist in the prophet Isaiah in writing these words is saying, remember this. God created. He who created you, O Jacob, he who created you, O Israel, says, fear not. Remember whose you are. God has you in his hands. And it is from that place of being valued and loved and being inheritors of the promises of God that the instruction the call, the words of grace to us are fear not. The writer goes on to say, I will carry you. I will protect you. And the passage that we heard finishes with God declaring that he is going to gather the people. 
everyone who is called by my name, who I created for my glory, who I formed and made, all will be gathered up into the goodness and the beauty and the life that is God, that is the God who created all things. This is the same image as we get in the book of Revelation of God creating a new heaven and a new earth, God gathering up and restoring what was the perfect Garden of Eden. Fear not. Fear not. Don't be so scared, so anxious, so worried that you are not in a position to A, see the coming of God's goodness and celebrate it, but B, be open to it when it arrives. God is at work. That is the promise. God is at work. That is the history that we inherit in the church. That God is a God who fulfills God's promises. And so the prophet says, right, you know the history. Trust that God. Allow that God's track record to be proven in your life. So don't be blinkered by your fears. Don't be clutching at straws out of the desperation of your fears. But indeed, allow that which might cause you to fear, to focus your mind and your heart, to focus us as a community, to look to the things that God is doing and embrace them. For we have the story of John the Baptist, the one who comes to prepare the way for the Lord. Who speaks boldly, calling people to repentance, baptizing with water, and critically pointing to the Jesus who's coming. And it would be possible for people in that moment to see this prophet of God and go, oh, I haven't got my life in order. Oh, God's going to take me. Oh, no, everything's going to go bad. And either A, run away, or B, fall on their faces in front of, of John and not listen to what he's saying and not respond to what he's doing. And friends, I've seen that again and again. People hear the word of God, the call of God to, to action, to faith, to loving, to caring. And because of their fears, knowing the word of God, somehow it doesn't become translated into the acts of the faithful. And that is our call. As we engage in the story of God, cognizant, aware of everything that's going on around us, no matter how scary that is. And friends, I don't know about you, but my life sees some scary things happen around me. Being aware of that, allowing the reality of those things to be real for us, and in that space going, and I will not react poorly, but will focus myself on the call of God, the promise of God, the work of God, the love of God, the example of God I see in Jesus, and the presence of God's power in me by the Holy Spirit right here, right now, to respond to all that is scary in a way that honors God that brings life, that values that which God values, that is hope for the world. John, aware, aware of the power of Herod, was not afraid to speak truth to power. John, aware that some people 
might react poorly to the call to repent, was not afraid to take them on. And John, aware of who he was, who he was as a child of God, was not afraid to say, and don't look to me. Don't lift me up on some plinth and make me something special. Look to Jesus. Look to the one who comes. The one filled with the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus is baptised into a time of oppression. Baptised by the Holy Spirit. Sign and symbol of the power of God. And the mission of Jesus, the word of God is that the Spirit is available for you and I. So what better way to kick this start this new year with all its unknowns, with all of the things that might cause us to worry, to be fearful, to want to close the blinds and turn off the, the media and do a jigsaw puzzle. Whatever it is that is our retreat, now is the time to go, I will fear not, for I trust in the promises of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Loving Father God, we seek your spirit this day. The spirit that banishes all fears. The spirit that leads us to the edges, to the crossroads, to the hard places of life that we might love our neighbour, that we might stand against injustice, that we might embrace the call to give generously of who we are and what we have. Lord God, anoint us afresh with your spirit. Come and live in each one of us. That what we say might mirror what we know. And what we know might change who we are and how we live. For we want to be known as children of God. Followers of Jesus. The people marked by sacrificial love. So we offer ourselves, all we have and all we are, to the service of your kingdom, Lord God, to the mission of salvation, renewal and reconciliation. God, take us, and use us to your glory. Amen. Let's sing. Sing up the Lord's goodness, Father of all wisdom. Come to him and bless his name. Mercy he has shown us his love. Forever faithful to the end of days. Come then, all you nations, sing of your love's goodness, melodies of praise and thanks to God. Ring out the Lord's glory, praise Him with your music.
So go. Go to the crossroads. Go to the hard places. Go to the edges. Go to those who are battling and love. Love like Jesus loved. Love like God loves. Love. Love all to the glory of God. Go in the power and the grace of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Took a walk outside of my walking Stepped inside another's shoes Walked the dusty borders between us Paths I'd never chosen to choose How then shall I live? How then shall I live? How then shall I live? Sound outside of my listening Felt the living hum of the ground Waited on the voice of the Spirit Singing with its new old sound How then shall I live? How then shall I live? How then shall I live? Oh God, how then shall I live? Saw the world outside of my looking Gazed upon the eyes of its soul Held the hopes and fears of tomorrow Found the pieces making the whole How then shall I live? How then shall I live? How then shall I live? Took a step outside of my walking Found within a beat that we share Walked with you the length of a lifetime And made of life a living prayer How then shall I live? How then shall I live? How then shall I live? How then shall I live?